So how do you know that God wants you to become an entrepreneur, a faith-based millionaire? And how this one story of oil and a jar in jars can unlock those resources to come your way. We'll unpack that in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad Scripture Series, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. It's fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name's Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we want to award a church charity or nonprofits $5,000 from our community once we cross 100 50,000 subs. And we're almost there. Please, if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe. Okay, so just yesterday, uh, we came back from an invitation from Steve Weatherford, a Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants, and uh, he held a conference called CEO of Your Life. And what I love about Steve's work is that he's using business and understanding godly principles and putting and understanding that there is a kingdom God economy out there to help you become financially free, independent, and live the type of life that God had purposed and intended for you to live. And actually this parable, this story was inspired from that conference. And uh, it's a story about the widow's oil. And so we're gonna be referencing a uh, story in 2 Kings chapter four on how God is gonna use this woman, this widow, and how God can use you in your journey in this crazy era, this time that we're in through the pandemic, post-pandemic, coronavirus, Delta variant, Lambda variant, how God can still use you in a very powerful and mighty way to become the God kind of man and woman and the God kind of millionaire and entrepreneur that he intended and purposed you to be. So let's take a look at 2 Kings chapter 4 and let's read the story together. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor, is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, well, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons pour oil into all the jars as each is filled, put it to one side. She left them and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Okay, so what are the lessons we can learn from this? And how God can use you and why God wants you to become a faith-based millionaire and why God wants you to use you in a powerful way, why God wants you to become an entrepreneur. And I want to preface this by saying, I disclaim, full disclosure, I'm not a pastor, never went to Bible school. Uh, I'm not uh, somebody that went to what those things, a seminary. I'm just a guy that's in a church reading the Bible and looking to implement it Monday through Saturday so I can be, you know, once I'm fed on Sunday to implement it on Monday through Saturday in my life, my family, my business, the people I coach and mentor, the people that we employ. I'm looking to incorporate God's word into all that we do, and that's where this perspective comes from. And so when you're reading the Bible and you are in this relationship you have with God, my assumption, my encouragement to you is don't just let the pastor read the Bible to you on Sundays. Read the Bible Monday through Saturday. Read it with your family. Read it with your team. Read it with your, the people that you influence and coach because we're all on this journey together. And remember, the last time somebody picks up the Bibles when they go to church on Sundays, if they even bring a Bible to church to begin with, because today Bibles are in the church or the scripture is put on the screen. But if you have a personal relationship with God and you're bringing the word, right? You're bringing this Bible and you're heeding to the word and you're learning from the word. And it's called the living word because every time you read it, something new happens because you grow as an individual and God blesses you with uh, certain things and puts certain situations in your life and certain things manifest and you read scripture differently than after going through those experiences. So that's just been my experience. So please, before you jump on me, what type of background do you have? What type of knowledge do you have in terms of Bible? Listen, guys, I'm just let you know right now. I'm just a lay person in a church just trying to figure out this thing called life and how God wants to use me in his plans, in his, in his world, et cetera, et cetera. So if this helps you, amen. If not, no big deal. There's other videos I'm sure you can watch, but uh, if you want to figure out how the story can help you become an entrepreneur and become a faith-based millionaire, Thanks for continuing to watch. So, a couple lessons from this story. Um, number one is who do you seek help from? 
Okay, in times of crisis, this widow went to the man of God, the prophet, Elisha, who God is using in a very mighty and powerful way. See, oftentimes, especially in this world today, about me, 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 social media, you know, selfies and all that type of stuff. Oftentimes, people just want to look at the man and the woman in the mirror and say, that's sufficient for me to get through this issue, this problem, this, this, uh, uh, this situation. Well, in this story here, just to reiterate, she aligned herself with a prophet who was aligned with God, who was active with God, and was held accountable to God. And so oftentimes we align ourselves with people who just say, go out and say, I'm just a good person. I'm going to be a good person. Or, How do you know you're a good person? Based on what values and principles that's been anchored over the test of time, in this case, the case of humankind. And that's why for me, I started following the Bible. I haven't been a faith-based believer. I've been a Christian for my entire life. But uh, once I started reading the Word and I started anchoring myself to values and principles, I realized that I can get through a lot of things out of life because... So many winds of life come blowing your way. So many situations come blowing your way. And for me, what has worked out for me, and it may work out for you, is that when you align yourself with God's man and woman that's aligned, active, and accountable, watch what comes your way. Which leads me to say, so sometimes, even my channel, don't, don't say just because I'm a believer in God that you're going to follow me or listen to anything that I've got to or heed to any of the lessons I'm about to share in this YouTube video. You should go out and seek wisdom from the Bible. You should start processing these things. You should start building that relationship with God. You should start seeing how God is using words and these scriptures to bless you in your life. And you start building that connection. You start creating that alignment. You start having your form of activity with God. You start having this accountability with God. Anchor yourself. Consider anchoring yourself to scripture and what scripture is sharing with God's people throughout the period of humankind and how it can apply to you even in this year, even in this year of craziness, these years, last couple of years of craziness where everybody in America and then sadly the world is so divided and how God wants to unite and how he wants to use God's man and woman, God people to be a light in the darkness. So who do you seek help from? Because in this story, her husband incurred a lot of debt. So if there is another lesson to be learned from the beginning of the story is number one, don't get into debt. Avoid owing things to other people. And there's many ways for you to do that by increasing your money knowledge 101. So if you affirm this, put it in the comment section below. Put in this comment section below this affirmation. I am aligned with God's people. I am aligned with God's people. If you believe that, you're doing that, you're aligned with people who are aligned with God, put it, I am aligned with God's people below in the comment section. Okay, so number two. God wants to use whatever he's already placed in your hand underneath your nose. Because she goes to the prophet and she goes, listen, man, I got nothing. I got nothing in the house. I got no gold, got no silver, got no jewelry, got no cash, got no savings, no investments, no 401k. He didn't have a life insurance policy left behind for me. Nothing. All I have is a jar of oil. She says, really? Is that you got? You got a jar of oil? Okay, that's the resource God has given you? Okay. Well, let's make the most of what you have. And the interesting thing about this is God is using the least to make the most. Let me repeat that one more time. God will use the least to make the most. So you cannot discount your children. You cannot discount the little blessings you have here and there. You cannot discount the little three, four, five hundred bucks you have in your bank account. God will use the least to make the most. And she says, okay, well, all I got is a jar of oil. So oftentimes we think we got to go to college. We got to get this certification. Da, 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 da. No, God wants to use you right now in this current capacity to make the most of your job, to make the most of your relationships, to make the most of your associations, to make the most of whatever it is you had. Write down, figure out what it is that you have and don't discount it. And oftentimes people discount their blessings. People, oftentimes people discount what they have. I'll give you a quick example. Just yesterday I took my son. I'm a big sports card enthusiast. And we went to the Dallas Card Sports Show yesterday, right here in Allen, Texas, at the big uh, convention center and uh, hotel here. Whole spot, cards, 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 baseball cards, collectibles, souvenirs, you know, sports memorabilia, all over the place, okay? And I go to these tables, and I'm buying cards from uh, these, these folks. And one of the cards that I uh, want to collect is this Kevin Durant card. Okay, it's a very rare card because it's the orange. It's not the white one, it's not the black one, it's the orange one. I wanted to collect it. I found out, not only did he have it, but he also graded it uh, by this grading company called HGA. So they, authentic they authenticated, they graded it, and made sure the corners were squared away, edges, surface, and center. Anyway, make a long story short, I asked him, how did you get this card? And he says, I pulled it when I was 12 years old from a pack. 
I said, really? And now he's selling me this card years later and I'm buying it uh, from him for like $300. But the cost for him to purchase it back in 2012 was a few bucks. So he turned a few bucks into hundreds of dollars later on. Something as simple as a sports card, something as simple as a baseball card is what God will want to use you. That was this kid's jar of oil. It was sports memorabilia. It was a sports card, trading card. So when you're looking at what God has in store for you, he's already sent it your way. He sent you experiences. He sent you relationships. Now you got to make the most of it. So if you want to use this point and incorporate that in your life, put it here in the comment section with this affirmation. I am using what God places in my hands. I am using what God places in my hands. Okay, number three. In the story, she was asked, go ask your neighbors for jars. Go ask your community to assist in your situation. And in God's economy, guess what we're supposed to be able to do in God's economy? You are supposed to help your fellow neighbor. You're supposed to help the people to left and to right. And one thing I love about moving here to Dallas, Texas, is there's so many businesses out here of entrepreneurs. What I love about the, the strip malls, not only will they have their big box chain, you know, Best Buy or Olive Garden or Gap, but they're also going to have about 9, 10 other uh, tenants in there that have their own small businesses, mom and pop restaurants, mom and pop retail stores, mom and pop whatever, but it's all small business owners. And I like to go into those small businesses and do business with the small business because that, in my opinion, is God's economy. I'm helping circulate my dollar into other Christian entrepreneurs, into other small business owners. Because I want my dollar, before it leaves to these the big box change restaurants, I want my dollar to circulate amongst other entrepreneurs, other people that have started their own deal. So back to the story. She was commanded to go get jars. Go get more jars. Get, get more jars from your neighbors. Collect. Hey, can I borrow your jar? Hey, can I borrow your jar? Hey, can I borrow it? Knock, knock, knock. Can I borrow your jar? Knock, knock, knock. Can I borrow your jar? The boldness to talk to people, her neighbors, who probably... She had not had a relationship with before this crisis, before her husband passed away. Now she's asking for jars, which also is to lead you to believe that you should be neighborly. You should get to know the people that you are living around, or you should choose your neighbors wisely, or you should live in a neighborhood where you can depend on your neighbors, that you are a community of people that was looking out for each other, and they're easy for you to access if you need to borrow a jar, so something as simple as that. So she was commanded to go out, and even in Scripture it says, don't ask for just a few. Hmm. Was that like a preface to a blessing? Don't ask for just a few, it says in Scripture. So if you go out and help with your neighbors and you're involved in your community, don't ask for a few. Don't ask for one or two people. Don't ask for one or two jars. Ask in abundance. And I wonder if that's what this widow did. But she was commanded to not ask for just a few. Number four. She was commanded to go with her sons, close the door, and let's get to work. And so she says, what are you talking about? I got, I, got this jar, I got this jar of oil, okay? I got this jar of oil. Hey, sons, boys, come here real quick. I got this jar of oil and start pouring? And start pouring? Wait, wait a minute. It's, 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 you know, one container of oil. But God is now about to create the miracle here, you see? <laughs> He's about to create a miracle. She kept pouring. And it filled up. Wait, wait a minute. Get an, let me get another one. Boom. It filled up. Whoa, whoa. Give me get this oil is not stopping. Yo, it's not stopping. Look, boys, get some more jars. Get some more jars. Get some more jars. She kept pouring. This oil was not stopping. Therein lies the miracle. God is creating something abundant in her life. And she's like, oh, give me another one. And then next thing you know, boom. Mom, we don't have any more jars. <laughs> and as soon as boy said that, and she had nothing else to pour the oil into. Then that's when the oil stopped pouring. You know what I'm thinking at this time about how this would have felt? Dang, I wish I had more jars. I now know why the prophet said, don't ask for just a few, because a miracle is about to come your way. You <laughs> see, that's what's, the reality is, hey, you go about doing your business, your career, your interviews, uh, selling your product, your service, door to door, selling your product at the mall, the retail stores, online, whatever. Don't ask for just a few because God's about to do a mighty work with your acts because you're trusting him to bring resources, clients, customers, website traffic, people in abundance to your conference, your event, your way. If you are just not asking for a few and you're just not saying, yo, okay, God, let me ask you for limitations 
Because you're asking God for limitations, you're expecting limitations, but yet you serve a guy that has unlimitation, not limits in his realm. So here, pour with your family, work together with your family, work together with your boys. One of the things I love doing with the children is they were babies, now they're grown. I got kids that are ranging from 25, actually today's uh, JoJo's birthday, he's turning 11 today, and tomorrow my oldest son turns 26. So we've got children in our household and we want to involve our kids and our business in what we're doing. They may not completely understand it now at the stage of life that they're in, but they're going to be exposed to it. So God wants to expose your children to his miracles with you taking action. And if you take an action, the next thing here is number five, the prophet then said, okay, now that you got your jars filled with oil, go sell it. Go sell it back to your neighbors. Go sell it to the marketplace. Go sell it to the flea market. Go sell it at the mall. Go sell it online. She was commanded to go sell it. And some of you guys are saying, well, listen, didn't God just bless her with resources, put the blessing on her lap by pouring oil into all these jars? Yes. But God ain't just going to save you money. You got to go out and sell it. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 26. Even King Solomon, the wisest and richest king, Whoever lived, even King Solomon, puts in his Proverbs this instruction. Let's read it together. It reads like this. People curse the man who hoards grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. <laughs> so in other words, God's got ama amazing resources that you have, that he's given you, that he's gifted you. But you are cursed because you're not selling it. You've got a way to communicate with people. You've got a way to interact with people. Well, Matt, you don't understand. I'm an introvert. Yeah, but God still wants you to sell. God still wants you to communicate. God still wants you to connect. You might be introverted in your own personal stuff, but right now God's got a mission for you because God didn't create for you to be in a cave. God created you to be a blessing, to be in your community, amongst your neighbors, to interact. Now, whether it's four hours a day, eight hours a day, 20 hours, it's up to how you feel that God is leading you in, in that regard, but God wants you to go out and sell things. God has allowed you to go through college. God has allowed you to get through the situation. God has allowed you to get through the scenario. Now, go out and sell it, go out and market it. Get say, hey, you got a problem, you got a problem? You don't have oil? Here's a jar, want to buy? And that's what she and her sons did. So this widowed woman is teaching her sons, who's watching, observing this whole thing, to trust God and to pour in other soil to see a miracle happening in their life. And then they're watching mom follow the prophet's instruction, following God's instruction to go out into the marketplace. And I'm sure, I'm sure, when you're selling things, guess what she ran across? Nah, I don't need the oil. Ah, I'm good. I got enough. I'm pretty sure in that journey of selling oil, it wasn't just go, go pour the jar of oil and go sell the jar. It wasn't that easy. It's never that easy. And I don't want you to go about thinking that it's that easy. But I'm pretty sure along the way of her going out to go sell it, she faced a lot of no's. She faced a lot of nah. And when she started collecting money, I'm pretty sure that some people wanted to rob her of her cash because she started carrying around an abundance of cash from selling her jars of oil. So she needed protection and discreetly hold her finances, hold her money aside and, and, and not get robbed. I'm sure that scenario happened too as well. But if you're looking at the scripture is that God is putting something in your life in a very supernatural basis. What I love about being an entrepreneur it allows me to tap into my faith every stinking day. The last, let's say, the recording of this video is 2021. The last time I took a paycheck from somebody else to make a living to pay my bills was 2003, 17, 18 years ago. And the biggest worry for me was to say, oh my gosh, I don't have a guaranteed paycheck. I don't have a guaranteed income. I don't have the military uh, a paycheck on the 1st and the 15th. No, 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 no. <laughs> I slipped into a new economy. The economy of trust, trusting God. That was going to go about. I said, I acquired a skill. Got to put $500 in my way so I can get an insurance license to go out there and market myself in the community, find people that need insurance, people that need retirement planning. I was able to make a living off that, earning fees and commissions because I was able to trust God in my decision, to trust God in my journey. I'm saying, you know what, God, I'm a single dad. I got three kids. What normal job can I get? What normal job can I get that I can drop off my kids at 8.30, pick them up at 3.30, that I don't have to clock and clock on and get fired? And God placed in my way. I wish I could say I chose the insurance industry, but God said, no, 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 I'm going to direct you to the insurance industry. And God's going to direct you to the industry he feels you are best fit for the talents and gifts he's given you to go about and doing his work. 
And so from a supernatural standpoint, trusting God in faith of the Lord, where do I find the customers? Well, you got to go out and pour. You got to be ready and available. You got to have something to sell. And then when you have something to sell, go out and sell it. Sometimes I face many people, oh, my house got to get changed. I want God to change my life. How's he going to do it? Just, Listen, God, you got all these things right now. You got to go out and sell it. Market yourself. Oh, you know that one or two people. Yeah, this, you talk about 100 and 200 people. No, no, one or two people. No, 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 that's not, that's not sales. That's not reality. There's another parable I talked about in terms of the parable of the sower. Watch this video here about how you should be acting as a sower of your goods and services, as seed. And when you look at yourself in a scenario, you have to understand that God is a God of abundance. God is a God of unlimited resource. God is a God of unlimited provisions. So when you're looking at your relation with God that way, if I serve an unlimited God, if I serve a God with unlimited resources, I would serve a God with unlimited provisions, why am I limiting myself to just 25 phone calls? Why am I limiting myself to just seeing 10 people today? Why am I limiting myself to just this, this one campaign? So with that being said, to answer the prevailing question at the beginning of the video is, why God wants you to become an entrepreneur? You know why? Because he wants you to depend on him. He wants you to lean on him. One of the commandments, God says, I am a jealous God. I want you to worship and honor only me. And in exchange of you worshiping and honoring me, guess what's going to happen to you in your life? Well, you know, you know God can't tell me what to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you what you want to follow. You want to be egotistical and arrogant and all that stuff, knock yourself out. God has given you this thing called free will. But if you're wondering why things are a mess in your life, ask yourself that question. Why are things a mess in my life? Is my ego, my pride in my way? Have I not shifted my identity away from just me, myself, and I? Or can I shift my identity to serve, to help others, to be an example that God can use in a very buttoned way, that you can be the light in the darkness? Ask yourself, and God, how can I be used? Well, use what you got, man. There's a jar of oil. <laughs> There's a jar of oil you can use. Really, that, that, that's what you want me to use, God? Nothing sophisticated? No, that's it. I want you to use a jar. And then pour and then collect, and then sell. When you're looking at yourself in a situation, ask yourself this question. Have you ever asked yourself, is my God, my faith, my belief enough in God? Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10. It reads like this from the New Testament. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And through God, you are strengthened. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Could you imagine the power in trusting something so supernatural, so intangible, that you can't wrap your hands right. You can't quantify it. And that's what I love about the journey of entrepreneurship. And that's why God in that process will help you pay your bills. God will help you create the resources to pay your staff. God will create the resources and the opportunities for you to elevate your game, to magnify your, yourself. So therefore you can magnify him in that process. And as I wrap up, ask yourself these three questions. How clear am I about what I want and how God wants to use me? How, how clear am I? Have you written that down? How clear are you about your dreams? And by the way, God wants you to prosper. Scripture says that God delights in the prosperity of his people. God wants you happy. Think about yourself. If you're a parent out there, don't you want you to see your kids happy and your kids all getting along together? Well, how much different is that God is looking upon you, his creation, his child? God wants you happy. God wants you prosperous. God doesn't want you broke. God doesn't want you weak and ineffective. He wants you meek and humbled, so therefore he can use you in a very mighty and powerful way. But how clear are you about your goals and your dreams? How clear are you about your resources that you have right in your hand? I'll tell you this, there's another video here I want you to check out. How God used me using $500 to create a multi-million dollar company. I'm just one, by the way, I am just one of very many examples in the world. And God wants to use you in that regard too as well. So Pat, it's really, all I got is 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 2,000 bucks. All I got is a college degree. All I got is this uh, job opportunity is from, from sweeping docks and decks. I could be used in a very mighty and powerful way. Yeah, because you got to go out there and collect. Collect wisdom, collect experiences, collect guidance, and then pour. 
and sell. Number two, assess your skills, assess your abilities, assess your resources. It didn't say assess going more into debt. Assess skills, assess your abilities, assess your resources, because it leads to number three. The next question is, are you willing to go out and sell? Are you willing to go out and make the most of what God has placed your way? You know, oftentimes, People say, Matt, well, did you go to college? Did you go to college? No, I didn't go to college. Here's why I didn't go to college. It's not like it was some master plan. To me, it was just flat, just flat out common sense. When I left the military and I had three kids, I was a single dad. And I'm busting my tail. I'm working as a lifeguard from 5 to 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm working at the Olive Garden as a server. And I'm working as a G for Lube as a hood technician doing oil changes. Fancy resume, right? <laughs> I didn't go to university or this private college or that. No, no, no. I did none of that to get a certification, to get a college degree. I used whatever God has placed my way. And I wish I could say I was smart enough to choose the insurance industry, but I wasn't. The insurance industry chose me. I was hit up for a conversation about getting involved in this industry in the most unlikely of places. And that's going to be another video. It's <laughs> a complete other video. But I was hit up about this conversation, about this opportunity to get involved in this industry in the most unlikely of places, for the most unlikely <clears throat> of people. But are you willing to go out and sell? Are you willing to go out and find out what those opportunities are? Are you willing to go find out what those relationships are? The people that lead you to something, to something, to something, to something. Are you willing to go out and do that? All right, so that being said, guys, I'm fired up for this story to be incorporated into your life and how this manifests into new revelations, opportunities, and levels in your financial life and your journey to becoming a faith-based first generation cash flow millionaire. So put in the comment section below your thoughts, your questions, your feedbacks, your questions. Uh, you agree with some of these points. You don't agree with some of these points. I want to know, put it in the comments section below. And before I let you go, please check out this other video here, how the parable of the sower can make you a millionaire and how this can make you manifest the ability to go out there and sell and plant and grow and be engaging your community, please check out this video. And please check out this video, which is basically my testimony, how God placed $500 in my life, it's all I had, and turned it into a multi, multi million dollar company. And if you've been watching this on Facebook, and if you haven't done so already, please click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you've done so already, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe because we want to award a church chair and nonprofit $5,000 from this YouTube channel, this YouTube community, on behalf of you and myself, to award a church chair and nonprofit $5,000 so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.